Hello and good day. I am Dr. Osama Rafai, the virtual nephrologist, and as I promised, this is an update on my course in response to the COVID vaccination after I clinically had COVID in August of 2020, and I was vaccinated on the 24th of December, my first dose of Moderna vaccine, and the day before that day, I did have antibodies, and I was vaccinated again on January 21st, and I had it 48 hours following the second shot. I had a little bit of rough course, but everything went well. This video is a little bit longer than usual because I wanted to put the summary of the past year of COVID, of what I have learned just by me getting COVID myself and taking care of COVID patients in the hospital, on dialysis, and in the intensive care unit. And what I have learned, this is not everything that is out there, but what I found to be very practical and very informative to you as an individual who may have or get COVID, God forbid. So the definition of the serious COVID is actually a test of your immune fitness and your wellness. So what needs to happen is you need to really boost up your immunity to be able to overcome this calamity and difficulty, what we call the unregulated immune storm. The other medical name for it is cytokine storm. So it is very, very important that you learn these things that you need to do that have been well documented to help you with your immune fitness. So I'm going to talk about five measures that you need to do to improve your immune fitness and general health. And I'm going to touch on five different medications that have surfaced in the past year that we have learned to be fairly and effective in the treatment of acute COVID. So the five measures are the following. First and foremost, you need to have adequate amount of vitamin D in your blood. And whether you take it in a pill form or you get it through the sun, it's irrelevant. The first thing you need to have is adequate amount of vitamin D. Number two you need to have is good sleep. When you sleep well, your immune system recharges itself. So maybe you need to tango your sleep with a circadian rhythm. So you go to bed at nine and wake up at six. And that will give you an immune booster. The third thing that is very important is the fact that one third of your immune system is in the lining of your intestines. So when you eat artificial food, when you eat processed food, when you eat food that is loaded with preservatives, you are harming that immune system. The best thing to do is eat healthy, eat natural food, and also take probiotics, whether in the form of a pill or a tablet, or in the form of your food in your culture, whether it's yogurt, whether it's kimchi, whether it is sauerkraut, wherever you are in the world, there is fermented food in your culture. So make sure you take plenty of this. The other issue that we have learned as well is caloric restriction will deprive the old immune cells of energy and they will eventually die and the new soldiers of immune cells will come up and will be much stronger. So your defense is better when you restrict your calories. And we have found that people who end up in the ICU, the most common denominator and most common risk factors among all of them is being overweight and obesity. So make sure you take care of yourself if you can. Last but not least, if you are at home and you get COVID pneumonia or COVID pulmonary symptoms, the best way to reduce your risk of having that pneumonia settle in the lower part of your lungs is the proning position. So down on your knees and hands and cough and take a deep breath and have a family member or loved one tap on your chest to drain the secretions to open up your lungs. We have found that to be extremely effective in reducing the secretions of your lungs. So these are measures that I have found over the year to be helpful in the treatment of COVID from a symptomatic standpoint of view. The other five are the medications that we have learned to be effective in the actual treatment of acute COVID. First and foremost, adequate amount of vitamin D. So you need to take good amount of vitamin D. Number two, 
Kudos to the National Health Service in the United Kingdom. They have had the first solid study about the use of Decadron in pulmonary symptoms of COVID. I personally had pulmonary COVID, and the only thing that pulled me through this is the Decadron that really reduced the inflammation or the cytokine storm inside my chest. Third, the drug that is called Remdesivir and also antiviral medications. Remdesivir is a good drug, has not been as impressive as we hoped for it to be, and it's only used inside the hospital or what we call inpatient medication. The other uh, two groups of medications called the convalescent plasma, which contains antibodies or immune defense proteins from blood of people who did have COVID in the past. And this is also an inpatient therapy. There has been now what is called monoclonal antibodies that are infusion that is given one time as an outpatient for patients who have COVID, and it has really made a difference in reducing the risk of COVID deteriorating into hospitalization. Last but not least, there is a medication called colchicine. A few weeks ago, a great study was published out of Montreal talking about the value of colchicine in reducing hospitalizations, ventilators, and death. So, this is what I know. Doesn't mean I know everything, doesn't mean I listed everything, but this is what I have learned for general measures to help you boost up your immunity, to help you stay healthy, and the medications that have solid data, studies, large studies, to support them in the use for the treatment of COVID. With this, I conclude episode number seven out of 52 episodes to update you with my condition after I got the vaccination, but this should be one year in a nutshell, one year in a nutshell, what I have learned and hope you stay healthy, stay safe and get vaccinated because we know today the incidence, the mortality, the new cases is going down. So we see the bright light for humanity. Love you all. Peace out.